Thank you and welcome to this uh, special meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council. Uh, for benefit of the uh, video, it is April 30th, 2009. I will ask the clerk, Deborah Lane, to please read the roll call. Chairman Rowe. Here. Councillor Backer. Here. Councillor Jordan. Here. Councillor Lennon. Here. Councillor McKinney. Here. Councillor Sherman. Here. Councillor Swift Kayak. Here. Thank you. Would you please rise and, and join me in a pledge of allegiance to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We will have a review of the meeting minutes from April 13th. Mm -hmm. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. The move, motion is to accept. To, motion is to accept the minutes from the meeting held April 13, 2009. Thank you. Moved second. And, moved and seconded. Uh, discussion on the motion? I don't know if this is a ditzy little thing, but the um, item that has to do with the 30th meeting. I wasn't, I didn't vote because I wasn't there at the 30th meet on March 30th. It says six and zero. Yeah, okay. I don't know if that's that critical, but. So we'll change that to a five zero vote. Any other corrections, additions, omissions? Seeing none, all in favor? Sure to be unanimous, please. We have obviously the, the big item tonight is the uh, approval of the uh, school department budget. We also have a few items that were left over from our last regular meeting, uh, which we were not able to get to due to the late hour. So uh, we'll begin with item number 76-2009, the school department budget. Uh, would someone like to review the, the uh, school department budget for us? Or Mike, uh, we had some changes in, in uh, some of the figures that were originally distributed to us. Perhaps we could have an explanation of that. Yeah, uh, I would defer to Alan or Pauline. Paulina Portria, business manager for the school department. I believe you all received the TAN sheet. If you want to look at that, the middle section is what was originally given to you and approved by the uh, school board. And those uh, numbers, the st we're looking specifically at the state revenue allocation. Those were given to us by the uh, Department of Education. Yesterday, uh, we received uh, information from the state that they did not want us to use the federal stimulus funds that we're receiving uh, hmm. as part of the general budget. We need to segregate that separately. Uh, so if you look at the right-hand column or section, um, we've had to remove the $699,120 of federal stimulus monies from the expenditure account uh, total and from the state revenue total. Um, if you look at the bottom line, it does not uh, change the tax rate increase. Uh, it is still 20 cents uh, increase on the mill. Is there any questions? Can I, I, I do have a question, only because I, I, I always have to analyze things. Can you explain to me why we would segregate, what was the rationale? I believe the state um, is receiving this money from the federal government, and we may have, or the state may have a federal audit and they want to make sure that it is kept separate from the state funding. 
So we will account for the, the revenue and the expenditure in a special revenue account. Ann, and then David. So, Polly, I'm sorry, I'm sort of hoarse, but um, I just want to make sure I understand the difference between this 20, the, the number we thought we had as of yesterday, 20,000, I mean 20 million, dollars that was the, the school budget, is Correct. the school budget. Um, and then the difference between that number and the 19,305,966 number is the six, that 699,120. Correct. That's in um, federal, whatever, uh, stimulus. It's ARRA, stabilization funds. It's listed yes. in the first sheet of our agenda. Yes. Okay. Um, so basically, the, nothing has changed about the, the, the spending, the total amount of spending. No, it hasn't. It's just, so will the, those dollars you said not be run through the general fund? Are you <coughs> Correct. It will have to be placed in a special revenue fund like we do for other grants, title programs, <coughs> Title I, Title II, local entitlement. All of those will have to be in a, a special so when we go to compare next year, I know, I, <laughs> you, know you look. <laughs> I don't know how we're going to do that. Uh, I mean, internally we can compare, including those federal funds. Uh, so but for the state, we need to approve it without those monies. So right now we have the general fund budget, which is what most of us think of as the school budget and the municipal budget and the community services budget. Right. And then for the schools, we also have um, the, for lack of a better term, the local entitlements budget, that, that section that's this, in the back of the book. The special the title, funds, yes. Yeah, the Title I, the Title II, all that kind of stuff. So this stimulus money will run through that now? Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, two, two more questions. Um, first, on this, on the first page of our revised agenda, we have numbers that are in blue. Uh, which show they've changed for the numbers as of yesterday. And I understand what the 699000 and change dollar is. And I see the local entitlement has changed by $5,000. So I presume one of those Title III or Title IV or whatever numbers has changed. The local entitlement yes. number changed to 365000 It was 360000 Right. So, so but we've, we've learned that we will be getting approximately 363000 but we have not received the final numbers. So we just rounded it off to three sixty-five. OK. So that's, that number changed. And then can you explain this IDEA? I think that's uh, special That is ed. additional. Um, Stimulus? Uh, federal stimula stimulus funds uh, for IDEA for local entitlement. So we type. So what what kind of stuff does that money pay for? It is an application that our uh, instructional support director is working on. It would be um, like the local entitlement application items having to do with special education. So teachers or, I don't know, whatever. There is a list ed techs of. or people that have to do with special ed. Or programs, or programs yes. that have to do with special ed. It's yes. restricted to special ed kind of stuff. Yes. Um, and this. And, excuse me, I think uh, Superintendent Hawkins may have something to add there. OK. For a little clarity. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, what I would like to add to this is what we are understanding from the state yeah. is that we must report this ARRA money separately, and that report will come fairly quickly, so therefore we have to set it apart from the others. So when you look at the IDEA amount of money, the warning that we have received and we are watching very carefully is you do not hire staff with that money unless you hire them as a contracted service, so mm -hmm. that they are only there as long as you can contract, contract with them. It will not return to the budget to be placed there. There is, a, there is a requirement or a, a chance of using 15% of this for technology. And there's also a portion of this to be looked at for the possibility of education for students who are under kindergarten age, in other words, the four-year-olds. And so those are pieces to it. It also does allow you to use some of this money for supplies 
and for equipment, and again, for contracted services. Mm -hmm. uh, they met last Thursday in Augusta, the people who do IDEA for the districts, and they are now working on their application. But it is an application that must go to be approved, and then once it is approved, then it will become a part of the uh, ARRA part of the budget. Okay. Um, so the 400, it seems like a rather specific number, 421, 436. I presume that's based on whatever application is. It was being it's based on out. a formula, and each system received a certain amount accordingly. When okay. we got our, our do documents from the federal government, it showed there were two areas. One was IDEA, the other one was for construction. Uh -huh. uh, we did not get money for construction, uh, but we did get this, this 421,436, and it was set up by district according, based on the formula that they were using uh, that kind of uh, looks like the same formula that they're using for our uh, EPS money. So this 421 is just as certain or uncertain as the 699? No, certain. It's certain. Yeah, this, this the, is money they're that... They're both stimulus. Right. Uh, and therefore have to report... When you, when you think of the money we get from the federal government uh -huh. that we have been getting, usually we get it for the, the ensuing school year. This money is stimulus money, so it is set up differently. And what they have told us is we must make decisions and we will be asked to report very quickly on how we're going to spend the money and then there will be another very quick report to show how it has been spent or how we intend to spend it. Okay, and, and when, did, uh, when did this, the IDEA federal, the 421,000 number, when that must have come about very recently? It did. Uh, what, what happened was, I would say probably a couple of months ago, we got an estimate of what it might be, and at that point in time we had construction money, we had that. We were told it is only an estimate at that point in time. Uh, just prior to the vacation week, we got a document from the state uh, which showed that this was the, uh, was the money that they were approximating we would receive at that point in time. The first Dom heard about it was that Thursday, uh, the Wednesday before they went to Augusta on Thursday to take a look at it. Okay. So it would seem to me, if I'm understanding this correctly, that this $421,000 is... Um, additional revenue that we're expecting uh, for special ed in the same way we're expecting the $699,000 as stimulus for, money for stimulus money yeah. they're just different categories yeah. of stimulus money the, the difference I, I should speak to it from this perspective too a while ago you all received an email from a citizen that talked about why did the superintendent sign a document to get $1.2 million, I believe it was. And I read that and I thought, I don't know that I signed a document for that. When I began to do the investigation, what I found out was, is that when the $504,000 that you've heard about several times in the last few weeks, mm -hmm. that truly was over a million dollars, the 1.2 million. What happened was 504,000 for Cape Elizabeth, was, uh, was a cut that we have to manage. The $699,120 is added to it. If we had not had the stimulus money, our cut would have been a $1.2 million. So this $699,120 has been put in here. We will receive it and return it as part of that money that we would have lost otherwise in that process. Okay. Um, my last question is, uh, is there any um, concern on your part or of the school board uh, that since these numbers have changed, since the school board didn't vote on these numbers, that I know we want to do everything legally so that whatever vote the citizens make down the road can't be contested. Mm -hmm. So do you have any concerns about us voting on these revised numbers tonight given that they weren't the same numbers as I don't board. have strong concerns, Anne, but I can't say that I don't have concerns. Uh, as you know, we are watching right now to see what is going to happen in Augusta because we're seeing a much larger uh, decrease in funding. Uh, my understanding is we'll hear from the governor tomorrow about how he is going to, uh, what he's going to present for his both the 09 budget, the current budget, and also the 910 budget. What we heard from the commissioner the other day was she did a 
phone conference with us, is that these numbers are fairly certain for 10. What her concern is, is that whether there will be money left in the money she has set aside for, all, uh, for 11 uh, in order to take that next step in the process. So I am fairly confident, I can't say I'm totally confident, but I'm fairly confident that these monies will stay in place for the FY10 budget. I would not want to try to even start to describe what the FY11 is going to be. Okay, thank you. I'm, I'm sorry that took a while, but I want to make sure we sorry. get Rick on the note. If you were next. Oh, I mean, Anne uh, touched upon a lot of the areas that I was interested in, and, and I'm still having a hard time because these things just come at us uh, Believe at me, I 11th understand. hour, uh, and that just seems to be the way it is. But this IDA, IDEA, uh, federal AARA funds, uh, is, it, is it this sort of just found money then for the school department that, that would be covering costs that were going to be covered by all the other sources of funding that we had? I th well, I, I'll have to move back when you said found money. When the stimulus was announced from the president, there was a certain amount of money that was to come to the governor for the state and a certain amount of that was broken up into school department and certain amounts of it were broken up into road repair and all of those things. So that amount of money was set aside based on that information. Then what they did was is they would use a formula to determine what each district is going to receive accordingly. So when you, when you I, I hate to use the term found money. I think what the stimulus we're all looking at is it is money coming in. Uh, I think with the picture, if you had asked me a month and a half ago, I thought the picture was there would be money there that I could apply for for certain pieces of the puzzle. Uh, that seems to have gone away and that the money now has been set aside for very specific things based on the economic situation of the state at this point in time. So <laughs> the answer probably is not as straight as you want. But I have to be honest with you, it's as straight as I can get because the, the story is changing constantly. But it has been fairly quiet in the last couple of weeks. Probably part of it taken over by the swine, uh, swine flu issue. But it has been fairly quiet. But we do understand that tomorrow at noontime we will, will receive a group phone message that we'll discuss with the commissioner as far as budget is concerned. State budget for the stimulus. David? <clears throat> Alan, I'm still not sure I fully understand. I, I, um, I sympathize, believe me. <laughs> so let me ask it from a different sure. perspective. When we had our joint school board town mm -hmm. council workshop, however long ago that was, a few weeks ago, and we were all sitting right here. <laughs> yes. And we were meeting, I think, within 24 hours after having learned that the state GPA funds were going to be, what, $465,000 or something like that, less than we anticipated. I think, are you talking about the, the 09, the 421,000? Or are you talking about the current one, which is 504,000? 504,000. 504,000, okay. Um, so we have learned that the state had just recently reduced by 504,000 GPA funding. The amount that we would receive. Right. Um, and based on that loss of funding, we talked about transferring to help make that up. Right. $200,000 in the town's undesignated surplus, and the schools would use a 160,000 of its contingency, and we talked about the balance being made up by sending it out to the voters with a tax increase. So are we now at a place where, just as we learned on short notice that we had lost $504,000, that we now have $421,000 of additional funds? No, th this, this money is very clearly defined as IDEA money, or special education money. So it has to be spent within the realm of special education. The way they have split it up and explained to us how it can be used is you can use the full amount, 100% for special ed programs. 
but you can also remove up to 15% of that money uh, to look at technology, as long as it has a direct correlation with your special education programs. They also put within the federal legislation a piece around education for students under five years old or before kindergarten. So those are two very specific areas that it looks at. And then from there, it looks at what other things will you need in your special education programs for identified services. So in other words, it is not opened up for just taking the place of general education money that you have lost. It must be focused on special education funds. And how much of the um, current budget, at least before the $421,000 appeared, it was allocated to special education. Is the total on here? 2.373 yeah. million. Yeah. 2.37. Thank you. Um, so, does this free up four hundred and twenty-one thousand dollars from that two point three to use elsewhere? When they're talking about stimulus money, what they are telling us is this is money above and beyond. What, you, what the town raises or your SAU raises for funds. This cannot take the place of what the town raises for funds for special education. It is to supplement it. That's why it's called part of the supplemental budget. And wh where did that $2.3 million come from? Was that on one of these? It's on the front of the agenda in the sheet. In the uh, number one, voted number one, a three plus the way down. Um, 2.3 million is for regular instruction. And then you've got special ed. Oh, I see. 2.3 for special. So now does that mean that the instead of spending 2.3 million for special ed, we'll be spending roughly 2.8 million? What it means is we will be spending 2.3 million, which is for our regular special ed program. What it also says is that we will have supplemental funds to supplement the program over a two-year period. And it cannot be used to hire new staff. It can't be used for those things. But there are pieces to the puzzle that you must uh, look at at that point in time. So it is supplemental. It's over a two-year period? It's, well, it was, I think it said if originally 18 months. But you can extend it up to two years. So the $421,000 will be stretched over? I'm not sure whether we'll get another amount in the next budget. Uh, are not, and I don't think we will. No. Yeah, that's a total. So, but the plan is not to spend it all in fiscal year 2010. So according to how, that's why they are using the state, at the state level, they are working with the special ed directors to look at how it would be most wisely used, because part of the stimulus money is to preserve jobs and is to preserve the programs themselves. So what it is looking at is where are you going with this money above and beyond what you would normally spend for identified students with special education needs in order to provide or enhance their programs. And are we going to be preserving any jobs with? I funds? don't know yet. I don't, is Dom here? No, Dom isn't here. I don't know yet. And when I talked with Dom the other day, he was in the process of uh, working on that at that point in time. So. My assumption is there will be some, some positions that are contracted positions that will be a two-year two positions in order to manage, and I, I would say like for instance, social worker position in special education and those types of things. Uh, we also have a changing picture of our regular special ed. We have 13 students coming in as kindergartners who we had not planned on having who have pretty serious special ed needs we will eventually have to provide their services through our regular special ed grant monies. But we will do some things to try to manage that in, in the interim. I had a uh, follow-up question on that. Uh, what portion of our special ed funds are contracted out to psychologists and outside professionals? Well, what we do is we have some contracted funds. We do have uh, one, is it one is under the contract for uh, social work services, psychological services. I think we have one psychologist under that. We have OTPT, physical, physical, physical therapists, that we contract with through our initial monies. 
how much money is involved here? Do you know? No? Just I don't have that bottom line. I don't know if you know what that bottom line for is. For contracted services. Yeah. I don't have it. I don't have my budget book here. I apologize. Hundred thousand dollars. Find me what? Hundred thousand. About a hundred thousand dollars. Thank you, Sarah. Sarah. So, is it safe to say that the the stimulus money we're receiving is specifically designed to encourage innovative programs or things outside what we've already budgeted? And exactly. If we were to try to pull some of that money to make up the regular budget, it would then be withdrawn. This, what, what would happen is basically when, against the spirit. Right. When we write our report to the federal government, and if our federal government report shows that that money was used to withdraw funds from your regular special ed budget, then we would, th there would be a question then of whether we would receive that or not. We must be able to show that it supplements. That's why it's called supplemental budget. It goes so above and beyond. The landscape mm -hmm. that we're discussing for this evening and that we had prepared for and that we've been talking about remains unchanged right because this money is not really money that can go in the budget right right or we wouldn't by definition or we wouldn't receive it so right. essentially what you've told us doesn't change no the discussion we're going to have or the vote we're going to have no. thanks Penny? Penny. i'm going to ask the question in a different way because we <laughs> haven't got a budget so if we take stimulus dollars and if you take and you say that for example uh, stimulus dollars cannot be used for special education dollars that have already been kind of allocated to those programs. If we don't have a budget, then um, we haven't allocated those dollars. I, I understand. I hear where you're coming from. My understanding, okay, and I'm, my understanding comes from the information we receive from the federal government, that the stimulus dollars were set aside uh, as stimulus to the economy mm -hmm. and therefore are not provided tax relief to help build a regular budget within your SAU, your school unit. But if you don't have a budget, then we haven't even approved a budget. So to take and use that argument against something that doesn't exist doesn't make sense from my perspective. I guess perhaps, and I, and I standing here would say to you that I feel I do have a budget that I presented to you. But it's it a budget proposal, right. but it's a budget that I have presented to you. I, I would say to you, and I could be dead wrong because this is all going to be proven in the works, as you know. Uh, I would say to you that if my report shows that this past year we had a 19 million 875, you know, just off the top of my head. And the next year, we have a $17,421,000 budget. There's going to be a question of where did that money go, for, go to? Why, why is there that difference? And are you using stimulus money to make up the difference? Now, again, this is all brand new, brand new land for us. Mm -hmm. And so, so that's what my concern would be. Dave? Alan, I'm just trying to fast forward then to two years hence. <laughs> well. <laughs> You've done the enhancements uh, through the stimulus money in the, in the arena of special ed. Then what happens to those enhancements once the money is no longer going that's, to be available? That's the biggest issue. And that is why we're being very careful in how we write the stimulus package. It is, a, it is money that is used for the immediate use of the program. It is not money that would be a continuation after the stimulus money is gone. That's why, for instance, we are not putting new positions in there. That when the stimulus money is gone, we would come back to you and say, well, the stimulus money is gone. We need money to continue those positions. We are looking at them to supplement uh, what we're doing in programming for our special education students. Yeah? I understand what you're saying, Alan. You wouldn't be adding um, permanent <coughs> people, permanent school employees. On the other hand, you would be adding services that um, parents and children and teachers would be expecting in the future. I mean, it's, it's just the same way when you fund something with a grant. This is just a big grant. You fund something with a grant, you have it for a year or two, everybody gets used to it, then the money goes away. So the service, and I understand it's wise not to hire permanent employees. 
but even hiring contracted employees, then you've, you've built your whole system around having those services and those contracted employees there. So in any event, what's happened is that the budget, the total of the, the regular budget plus the entitlement budget has, ex sorry, has expanded by 400 and whatever it is, $21,000 worth of services. So those, that's great for the short run, I guess, in terms of people receiving services. But as Councillor Sherman says, then comes the, when the money runs out, then the choice becomes, do you keep providing the services? It's akin to the Achievement Center, which was a, initially funded by a SEAF grant. Um, do you keep providing the services and fund them now through ta the taxpayer budget, funded budget property taxes, or do you get rid of the services? And that's the dilemma that you will face in a year or a year and a half whenever the money runs out. For me, there's a different clarity there. It may not, it may not be for you, but it is for me. And <laughs> you use the Achievement Center as the example. What I saw when I first came here in the Achievement Center was set up. It was set up over a three-year period with the understanding that the amount of money would decrease through SEAF and that it eventually would be picked up by the school system. The stimulus money, that's why they're being very cautious in writing that grant, that you are not putting anything in that stimulus package that will be understood as picked up by the system. So it will be taken care of immediate needs, so you whatever be, they are. So you would be adding services for the next year or two, whatever, however long a period it is. I'm nervous with the, for the word with services. full disclosure to everyone nope. that these services all just go away yep. in a year? This, this will be a document That's that explains viable. it very carefully. Uh, you know, I can, I can use an example. If we, we have a fairly large population of students who are coming in as kindergartners who need some very direct services <laughs> as kindergartners, we can look at providing a program for them for that one year to help, because we have a half day kindergarten, to give them a full day kindergarten to help them expand their abilities. So when they go into first grade, they'll be ready to move with other first graders. That is a type of a program I would see you could do. It's a one year, has a very specific purpose, and it ends at the, at the end of that year. I understand and so that. that's, that's the way I see it, and that's the way the grant will be written. I understand that, but that is the dilemma of expanding programs and expanding spending when you don't have an ongoing revenue and then having the dilemma of having to contract or turn to the taxpayers. So, thank you. Yep. I, again, I would argue that we will not be doing that in two years. I will argue that we will be writing programs that are taken care of within that interim time for very specific services. Sure. So, just to be clear, we are, by law, not allowed to take any of our special education money and cover any regular, any need in the regular budget and fill that in with stimulus. That we cannot do that. If we did that, they would take the stimulus money away. So, this stimulus money is essentially irrelevant to the discussion tonight and the vote we need to take because we cannot use that money in the budget. When you're talking about the IDA money, right? Correct. Right. I have a note here. <laughs> this is, uh, Trish has just said one more clarifying point. So I'll, let me read her a clarifying point. There are two components to the stimulus package. First one is $699,000, which you see here, is stabilizing funds to stabilize the budget. And then the 421 targeted funds for, are for special projects, not designed for taxpayer relief. And that's basically what I've been saying. Perhaps not in as good of words, but that's what I, what I, where I was trying to get to. Other questions, comments, while we have Alan and Pauline? I'm going to go back to a point that um, Anne has been making, because when you use your example of the young people, the kindergartners coming in, and uh, being able to kind of give them a jump start, if I were a parent and I then had a child a year and a half later, who had the same challenges coming into Cape Elizabeth school system and needed a jump start and that wasn't there, I would feel as though we had a takeaway. And so when we think about special projects, 
uh, and we think about um, introducing new programs, we do have to be really cautious mm -hmm. about creating that impression of takeaways because I think what creates many of our tensions are uh, the fact that people start to feel that um, somebody's getting something that they didn't, and now you're taking it away, and now the school system's not providing the services that we need for the young people in the community. And I think we really need to be cautious about how these dollars are spent. And to be very honest with you, I feel that's why I have a professional special ed director who is looking at that and looking at all of those possibilities. And that's why they have not finished writing this, because he, along with his fellow special ed directors, are being very cautious that they are not building a picture that cannot be moved the other way. Remembering that any child who has been a specifically identified through the IEP process, once you identify them, you must provide program anyway. Right. What DOM is trying to do, because we have a unique population of students, is to provide them that upper hand at that point in time. It, it, never, as it, it never is a clear cut, step-by-step -step picture. But we, we are looking at it from the perspective of what needs to be done now while we have this stimulus money and can target it towards, the, towards this population. Other questions, comments? Thank you, Alan. Okay. Thank you, Pauline. Thank you, Jerry. Oh, sorry. Are we ready to, uh, uh, David? Are you looking for a motion? Uh, I think that would be appropriate. Um, as to item 76-2009, I move uh, approval um, of the uh, school department budget as presented um, in the item as stated in our agenda. Second. Moved and second. Discussion on the motion. I would say that, that is predicated on the uh, property tax increase of 0.6 percent. Right. Well, that's that. That is the anticipated yeah. result. Anticipated result of um, approval of this budget. Just a clar clarification, Mr. Chairman, my, on number seven. Pauline gave me another page, which I didn't hand out to everyone because I was afraid of. We handed out too many pages at the same time to get confusing. But after where it says in local entitlement funds, comma. Where are you? Where are you, Mike? On uh, n number seven. It's yep. the next to the last line. <laughs> yeah. Is that what you mean? Number seven? It, it, yes. After so where it says local entitlement funds, it should have comma federal American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, ARRA stabilization funds and IDEA federal AARA funds. <laughs> Just a minor technical point. Then my motion should include that additional language as part of the approval. Discussion on the motion. Paul? I regret that I will have to vote against this motion. Um, I felt long and hard about this, but uh, I would, I'm going to favor a 0% tax increase, no tax increase, a 0% uh, to, to the taxpayers, you know, and I'll tell you why. I started, as I looked at this over the last few weeks, I've, I've been thinking about um, all of the implications. First of all, I want to say that the school board and the administration did an excellent job in putting together a very reasonable budget. But as you look at the landscape at the federal level, you know, we all know we're in one of the worst economic crises this country's ever experienced. And I, I travel a lot, and I, I've seen a lot of different things, and I'm concerned that this crisis is going to last for a while. So at the federal level, it, it's a mess. And um, I don't think we're going to see the stimulus money coming again. 
I think we're lucky this year that we got the package that is going to help us through. But I don't think next year we're going to see another $700,000 from federal stimulus and another $400,000. So I don't think we should expect that. Then when you look at the state budget, the state is in the whole, I think it's uh, $600 million in the next biennium budget. It's very likely that the state will cut education funding in the future. So I don't think we should anticipate more state aid. And then if you look at the regional level and what, what's been going on in the economy, things are very, very slow. And they practically came to a standstill just a few months ago. For example, I'll, I'll tell you what we did. At, I, I'm the president of the Greater Portland Council of Governments. A few months ago, we saw what was happening. We decreased our membership dues to the mun member municipalities by 10%. The effect of that decrease meant that all of the employees, very dedicated, highly educated, committed employees, got a 0% um, pay increase this year. So they all had 0%. They're lucky to keep their jobs, quite frankly. And then if you look at the town and what's going on here, we've had a, a decrease in our investment income, decrease in our revenue received by excise taxes. We have homeowners that are having trouble paying their property taxes. We have people, more people unemployed and people losing their homes. And I think in this environment, we should not be increasing taxes. I hate to say that because I think you've done a great job with the budget. And under normal circumstances, I would have no objection to supporting a budget like this. So what I did also is I looked back a few years, and for the last five years, the increase in expenses at the, on the town side has been 9.9%. And on the school side, it's been 20, uh, roughly 20%, about double. But still, those are reasonable numbers, given you know, when you look at uh, school systems around us. I think you're doing a great job. I think you're being efficient. I think you're being effective. But I just don't think this is the year to increase taxes. So I will be voting against the motion as it stands. Other comments, discussion? I will, uh, if nobody else is ready, uh, I've been called by a close friend, the great compromiser. I don't know if that's good or bad, but uh, last year our town was dragged kicking and screaming to a compromise position on their school budget. And in fact, that's happened the last two years, although the, the year before it was not uh, subject to a public validation vote. But last year it took three validation votes uh, to arrive at a budget. Um, this was painful. I, I think it was embarrassing for our town. It was certainly embarrassing for me because I was, happened to be finance committee chairman. And it was expensive. And yet this year, it, it almost seems to me like we're at the same precipice. We have people that are entrenching at 0% and 0.6%. And I, I just don't want to go down that same road that we went last year. It was divisive to our community, it was hurtful, and it hurts one of the things that I love most, and that's our town. So do we accept a 0.6% a uh, tax increase? Or do we accept a 0% tax increase? While I might prefer the latter, uh, I would like to throw out a com another compromise position of a tax increase of 0.3%, hoping that we might attract enough people to back that position that it might gain enough traction to pass in the community on one vote. Uh, the difference between 0.6 and 0% is not very much. The difference between 0.3 and 0 and 0.3 and 0.6 is, is even less. And if we're not selfless enough to give up our individual positions to come together as a town, uh, that really bothers me a lot. So I would vote uh, against the motion uh, as it exists because of the 0.6%, uh, hoping that people might consider uh, an alternate uh, compromise of 0.3% tax increase. That's where I am. David? Um, I'd like to follow that up briefly, Mr. Chairman. Um, as I said at our last meeting, um, I am not 
um, excited about a tax increase, and I would like to see a 0% tax increase. And in the perfect world, I would have liked to have seen the school department find a way to permit us to send a 0% tax increase out. But um, I think it's important that we send the school board's proposed budget to the voters. The school board has worked very hard on this. Um, the budget last year was divisive. We came to the polls three times. It wasn't economically the most efficient way to do it, but it's the process and we ended up at an end point that seemed to work. If we had gotten there in one vote instead of three, all the better, but if it takes three votes, so it does. Um, I, am, am, I, I am not willing to deny the voters an opportunity to weigh in on the school board's proposed budget. Um, we did last year, and in retrospect, I would have preferred to have done it the other way, to send the school board's number out first. If it had been rejected, send the council's number out. We might have ended up at the same place after three votes, but my preference is to start with the school board's <coughs> number first. So um, I will be supporting the motion, um, and I'd like to see my fellow counselors give the voters an opportunity uh, to weigh in on it before we, rather than just deny them the opportunity to even vote it up or down. And for that reason, um, I prefer the school board's budget as opposed to a compromise or some other number. You know that no one appreciates uh, principle any more than I do, David, and I certainly appreciate your principle as I do Paul's. And, and, uh, and, and my, you, my principle is one of community. And, uh, you know, I think we all respect each other's positions. Uh, but I think we. we well, I, I think that that, if I may, that's the the one the one truism throughout is that um, fortunately we all have respect for each other's positions, um, regardless of how the votes come out on this. Thank you. Well, everybody knows my position, but uh, I will say this, Jim. You know. If I've learned anything being on the council over the past five years, I've learned that in order to get things done, you need to compromise. You can't take a position and hold on to it uh, for dear life. You, you need to um, be willing to work with people to come up with alternatives. So if you can get the votes, I will support your point three. Thank you. Anne and then David. Thank you. Um, First of all, I want to say that I know that everybody's worked hard on this school budget, and I'd like to especially thank Alan Hawkins, our superintendent, and our business manager, Paulina Portria, uh, for the time they very generously took to meet with me when I had a number of technical questions on the budget. The school principals and the other staff deserve a lot of credit. They work very hard, um, and they deserve recognition for their commitment to making Cape schools better. Um, and as someone who has attended many of the finance workshops, I know how the school board members have labored over the ever-changing and ever-challenging details of this year's budget, which seem to be changing even today. Tonight, the council is faced with a decision on the budget sent to us by the school board. As a number of other counselors have said, reasonable people can disagree on these issues as is evident by the fact that the school board's recommended budget was in fact supported by only four of the seven school board members. This decision tonight is important not only because of the money involved, but also because of the symbolic value of just how and under what circumstances the council should vote to support raising people's taxes. In this very difficult economy, as Paul has mentioned, we need a compelling reason to raise local property taxes, especially since other levels of government, the federal and the state levels, are managing to hold the line by not increasing their tax burdens on citizens. Here are the facts as I see them. First, Cape schools will pay significantly less, that's hundreds of thousands of dollars less in the coming year due to decreases in debt service, and lower locked-in fuel prices in the coming year. 
These savings total about $278,000 in decreased costs, which the school department will instead spend on other line items in fiscal, 10, fiscal year 10. Secondly, fiscal year 10 enrollment is projected to decrease by another 34 students. This makes a total enrollment drop of 131 students, or a, a decrease of 7% over the last five years. Third, the consumer price index, which measures inflation, has been dropping and is now, the latest number is minus 0.4%. The regional consumer price index, including Maine, is also at minus 0.4%. Fourth, the average teacher's cash, cash salary, not including benefits, will increase in fiscal year 10 by over 5%, according to school budgets, the school budget's numbers. Fifth, the municipal, county, and community services budgets are all decreasing in absolute dollars in fiscal year 10. Many difficult decisions about personnel and service cuts have had to be made to achieve these cost and tax rate cuts. The only portion of the Cape Elizabeth budget and of the local property tax rate projected to have any increase in the coming year is the schools. And last, the town, meaning its citizens, is contributing $200,000 of municipal undesignated surplus to help offset the state's last minute and unexpected cut in fiscal year 10 general purpose aid to education to our schools. My conclusion, it is absolutely possible to give the school budget a significant real increase well above the CPI and still have no property tax increase for Cape Elizabeth citizens. Given that we can achieve a flat tax rate and still give the school budget an increase in a time of falling enrollment, I do not perceive a compelling need to give the schools an even bigger increase in order to fund average salary raises of over 5%. To go beyond would be to fund what we might like to have, not what is needed in this community, in this economy. For these reasons, I support the flat 0% tax rate budget, not the 0.6% increase in the tax rate budget. Thank you. I feel like I'm going to echo a lot of the comments that have already been made, even by members of the council that I disagree with. Um, I didn't ever feel any excitement over the prospect of raising uh, the taxes for the residents of this town. I didn't wake up in early January as this process began. I thought, gee, I'd really like to raise taxes uh, by 0.6%. That would be great. Uh, instead, what I found throughout this process was that the school board did a tremendous job every step of the way in collaboration with members of the council acting as the finance committee to craft a budget that every member of the town council was willing to support as recently as four weeks ago. And we all know what happened, unfortunately. Uh, the state funding uh, formula, which I still don't quite understand, uh, sort of took the floor out from out under everybody and we were faced with a shortfall of uh, half a million dollars. Um, before that event, the school board already, in my view, had compromised on, on a number of areas. I believe the building principles had already compromised in the staffing that, that they viewed as being necessary for the education of our children. They cut positions and they did their best not to eliminate teaching positions and not to eliminate or curtail programs. Uh, and I appreciate uh, Jim Rowe's uh, notion that we need to compromise, but I already feel like this budget has been compromised to death. And, I believe it entirely appropriate, even in this very difficult economic time, to ask the town's voters to support our schools with a very modest tax increase. I would have much preferred, as everybody up here would have, that we would have had no tax increase. Unfortunately, uh, things beyond our control came to pass and it, it, it just can't happen. The school board did its job, uh, they were reasonable and nobody at any workshop that I can recall was finding fault with their decisions. Um, 
I actually took out the comprehensive plan uh, earlier today uh, in which uh, it is clearly stated that one of the, high, the highest priorities in our town is the education of our children and the quality of our schools. And there were some very interesting points made by the group that drafted the comprehensive plan, which, is, which are fairly obvious. Funding local education is a community-wide responsibility. I think everybody in town agrees with that. Uh, the comprehensive plan then went, then went on to talk about uh, a family in town living in a medium price home, sending two or three children through the Cape school system. When those kids graduate, the amount of taxes that that family paid for those 12, 13, 15 years, depending on how many children they have, doesn't even come close to funding the value of the education that they receive from Cape schools. So not only is funding education a community-wide responsibility, it is also a lifelong responsibility for the residents of our town. And I, I don't think anybody up here really quarrels with that. Uh, I'm starting to feel like this debate really isn't even about the money. Uh, we are indeed so close between uh, a budget that would result in a 0% tax increase versus a 0.6% tax increase, it just seems like ideology has taken over. Um, and I probably am as guilty as the next person in that regard. All that being said, I think it is reasonable to support a budget that the school board has labored over intensively and then ask the town's voters to weigh in. Uh, so I will vote in favor of the motion uh, as made by uh, my fellow council member uh, and hope that the a majority of the town council will be willing to send that out to the voters uh, in a few weeks. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Penny? I will say that um, I thought long and hard about the vote tonight, and this hasn't been an easy decision for me. I've done um, a lot of talking to people over the past uh, several weeks, and I've really grappled with the decision because I know extremely well uh, the financial challenges faced by people in the town um, across the state and in our country. Uh, and initially, as I thought about it, um, I was, uh, I believe that the zero um, increase was what should be sent to the voters. But as I thought about it, and I grappled with it, and I thought about what was the intention of uh, the referendum process, and that referendum process is about sending the work of the school board to the community. And so I am supporting sending the .6 budget um, to the community. As I look, I see the amount of energy that <coughs> is put into this decision from everybody. Um, and it's really unbelievable to me um, because as I talk to people, I see, I've seen so much commonality. There's so, everybody I talk to, whether you you would consider them a school person or a non-school person or a school board member or whoever. Whoever I talk to, the amount of commonality to me is, um, is so great that if we could bring everybody together in a room and talk about it, we could then make a difference across everything in the town. And I'm not just talking about the schools, but there's so many other opportunities that we have here to create or to continue to build on the town that we have here. I've talked to town council members, school board members about working together and really harnessing the energy that we have in our town and the talent that we have. We need to take advantage of these times to really restructure, to collaborate within the community and to collaborate across communities because we are as a, I believe as a generation being challenged to redefine community and to redefine how we want our community to be. Um, out of, I see out of challenges come opportunities for innovation and if we don't take that opportunity we're remiss and we will be doing a disservice to the next generation i truly understand the need to balance i i have to do that every day in my life i have to balance my budget 
how I expend dollars for my business. I also understand the need to balance in order to ensure that we maintain a diverse community, which is extremely important to me. I think it can all be done if we talk and we all get in a room. So my vote to send the point six to the voters isn't made lightly because I see people every day who come into my farm stand who have to make a decision about whether they can afford a quart of strawberries. And I know that those people are out there. I talked with Mike McGovern about the fact that if we truly believe that we have human services in this town, then put it on the website. Because if we have services and resources that our, our community members can use to get through hard times, let's make it available and make it visible. Um, we all know that there's big issues facing us. To me, let's put the point six out there, let's get together, and let's face the big issues that are upon us, because it isn't going to get any easier, and I think that that's what we need to do. Thanks, Penny. Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> Last but not least. Um, I want to just echo what Penny said. I agree there's more commonality than not. I think um, I agree with Dave that people tend to get ideological. And I agree that we face major challenges ahead. And I think it would be <clears throat> exceptionally beneficial if we could take the very best of what each person has weighed in and put that together. Um, I don't think it'll surprise anyone to know that I'll be supporting the motion. And I just have a quick few points to explain why. First of all, and most importantly, I agree with Councillor Backer that it seems to me the fair thing to do. Um, it's people, all the elected officials, and many, many people in the community, citizens, have worked incredibly hard over this budget. Um, it, it's fair. Everyone agreed it's frugal. It's responsible. It's draconian in some ways. And I think um, it's only fair that we allow the citizens to weigh in on what the work that the school board has done. I also think that um, it's frankly in the spirit of the referendum law that the citizens be allowed to, to weigh in on the school board budget. The law states that they should vote on the elected body responsible for funding the schools. I interpret that to be the school board. So I think um, <clears throat> unless there's an overwhelming reason not to, in general, I favor putting the school board budget out to vote each year. Um, and then just quickly to review, I think we should bear in mind how deeply both the municipal side and the school side have cut. People, I think, have lost that in this discussion. Before we started talking about 0% or 0.6%, the school has made draconian cuts to its budget. They cut $400,000, eight positions. Um, they've already used up the funds that we were hoping to put toward the innovative laptop program that I noticed in the newspapers today several other communities are still planning to implement. I think that that's a huge loss for our um, school community and hopefully maybe at some point we can tap back into that. Um, the schools, I think, have taken it on the chin already. I think the municipal's taken it on the chin and I think that the taxpayers, at least everyone I've talked to, are more than happy to chip in their small amount to make this budget stay somewhat intact and make it work. So um, to that degree, if you look at it as sort of a three-legged stool, the third leg, I think, is more than willing to do its share. And $27 for median household doesn't strike me as um, too painful. A um, couple more points. I think people forget that there's what some people in the school community refer to as a parent tax. Um, and really what that is is a cost shifting. So that when we ask the school board to cut costs, oftentimes the program is not cut because that would be intolerable to too many parents in the community. So what happens is they shift the cost and the parent then picks up the difference. And now, honestly, it's gotten to the point where parents pay oftentimes well in excess of $500 per year per child. And that can cover athletic events, all, um, you know, travel, um, uniforms, field trips, um, sometimes textbooks. I know a few courses in the school are funded by the parents. And 
it's now gotten down to where parents are buying basic supplies for the classroom. I mean, today I delivered to my fourth graders classroom literally hand sanitizers, Kleenex and wipes. So bearing that in mind, there's already a, a sort of a hefty tax on the parents of the younger children in the community. Um, and finally, just a few facts that might make people feel a little bit better about paying a little bit of tax to make this budget work. We are, um, by state estimates, the wealthiest town in Maine, um, and we're at number 162 in the state for the amount we fund for our education per student. Um, we spend less than state average per student. We are in the, actually, bottom half of the district statewide. We maintain administrative costs of under 4%, and our teacher salaries and benefits fall below those of our neighboring towns we tend to compare ourselves to. Um, last year, Cape Elizabeth was certified by the Department of Education as one of only three districts in the entire state to be both high performing and high efficiency. And that, what that means is essentially we consistently do more with less money than virtually any other community in the state. I think that's a pretty good stamp of approval. Um, and finally, um, I just want to remind people that we got hurt particularly badly in the state cuts. And just to name a few of our neighboring towns, Cumberland received uh, 23,000 more than expected. They got a 2% increase. Scarborough lost 20, I'm sorry, 27 for a 0.4% decline. Falmouth lost 289,000 for a 4.3% decline. Yarmouth received 418,000 for some unknown reason, with an 18% increase. In contrast to all of that, we lost 504,000, a staggering 16.4% decline. So again, we took it in the chin. So with all of that being said, I, am, I feel quite um, sanguine to put forward the 0.6% increase, and I hope that all of the citizens in Cape will feel good about voting for it. Thanks, Sarah. Other questions, comments, discussion for the vote? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion to approve the uh, school department budget as presented and slightly amended by the manager? Oh, mine is not up. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you saw my face, didn't you? <laughs> I was waving. If it's okay, you can vote yes. I was waving. We have uh, <laughs> one, two, three, four, and all opposed, three. Uh, the vote carries four to three. <laughs> <laughs> Item 77 2009, general fund budget. I'll, uh, I'll give a minute for the chamber to clear. If you could please uh, exit as quickly and as quietly as possible, we'd appreciate it. Okay, uh, item 77-2009, the general fund budget. Do I have a motion? David? Um, I move approval of the motion as stated in our agenda for item number 77-2009 for the general fund budget. Have a motion? Second it. Moved and seconded. Discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion? All opposed? Show it to be six to one, please. Item 70, 78-2009, the school budget validation vote. This is primarily uh, on the format of the, uh, the question on the ballot. Do I hear a motion? 
format scheduling and so forth on the ballot. We have a motion to Ann. Um, I move that we approve the warrant for a validation vote on the 2010, the fiscal year 2010 uh, school budget. The polls will be open at Cape Elizabeth High School May 12, 2009 from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. and the warrant for the vote shall be signed by the municipal officers. The question on the ba the wording of the question on the ballot will be, do you favor approving the town of Cape Elizabeth school budget for the upcoming school year that was adopted at the latest school budget meeting of the town council? That would be tonight's meeting. Uh, two choices, yes and no. And in addition, there will, would be an advisory portion of the ballot following the main question. And that second question would read, I find the school budget adopted at the April 30th, 2009 Town Council school budget meeting to be, and then there's a choice of three options, too high, acceptable, or too low. Second. Moved and seconded. <coughs> uh, discussion on the motion? I have a general question, Penny? only because when I go into the voting booth, I always need explanations. Um, is it going to have an explanation? It says um, uh, adopted at the, you know, the latest school board meeting of the council, budget meeting of the council. Is it going to say what the increase is and all that other stuff? The, the, if I might, the, the law specifically prohibits that from occurring. Really? Yes. So you have to know. It will not be in the booth. It's all a mystery from here on out. Holy crap. They're not paying attention. They're going to have a tax increase. Yeah. The, the law, the, the wording of really? the law mandates the exact wording of the ballot question. But most people know by the time they get there what they want. Going to be lots of signs, huh? Yeah. I hope not. <laughs> Other discussion? <laughs> Seeing none, all in favor of the motion? Show it to be unanimous, please. We have another item that was tabled from April 13th, item 88-2008. Um, we have a proposed health insurance review committee. Uh, Mike, would you like to give some background on this? Just uh, very briefly, the council is well aware of it, the school board, and I understand the school board's actually designated someone? Mary Townsend. Yeah. Mary Townsend. Mary Townsend to serve on it. Uh, but what it, what it would do, would, this committee would look at uh, the health care coverage and benefits provide, offered to municipal and school employees will, will they prepare recommendations for opportunities for changes in coverage provided to employees, for changes in providers of coverage, and for employee-employer cost shares. Uh, the committee will include analysis of how any recommendations may influence the ability of the local government slash school department to recruit and retain quality employees. The committee shall meet uh, for up to six months. This report shall be submitted jointly to the school board and the council. And the town council and school board shall collaboratively review the report and proceed thereafter to independently consider the recommendations. Thank you. Uh, do we have a motion, please? Move to accept. Second. Moved and second to establish the uh, to establish the proposed uh, Cape Elizabeth Employee Health Insurance Review Committee as. Uh, put forth in our agenda. Discussion on the motion? Did, did, did we, uh, maybe I'm just having a memory lapse. Did we remove it from the table? No. Good Move point. to remove it from the table. Oh, second. Move to second to remove from the table. Uh, now we no. vote on oh. removing it. Sure Move and seconded. <laughs> okay. We're, we're we voting have, on to, to removing it from the table. Oh, okay. We have, we have a motion to remove the item from the table. Okay. Uh, Chairman, Mr. Chairman, I, I noticed that we ha didn't do that with any of these. And right. They were almost all table, including the budget. So we haven't voted on the budget yet, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's do it now that everybody's gone. <laughs> <laughs> can, can, we please, we, can we make a motion? Can we please assume that all the, the yeah. previous yeah. items that were tabled have a brought back previous up? Previous and discussion. forthcoming. Previous and forthcoming. Thank you. Second. <laughs> Moved and seconded. <laughs> Very good. You have to have a sense of humor up here. You do. Actually. <laughs> Thank you. Um, my big moment and I blew it. <laughs> Jim. Uh, Dave. 
could you or somebody remind me, I, I recall there'd be a member from the town council on the committee, a member of the school board. Were there also going to be community members? Yes. And uh, would those what we plan is to have a staff representative from one of the municipal departments, and Matt Sturgis has already agreed to f right. fulfill that. The school department will provide a staff representative. There will be a representative from the school board, representative from the town council, and five uh, citizens who hopefully will have some expertise in in uh, benefits and, and insurance and those type of matters. Um, we established uh, some criteria for the public in that the, we should not create a situation where, the, where there would be a conflict of interest. In other words, we wouldn't want somebody who is uh, selling particular products to be able to, to sell their products th uh, through this committee. Uh, is there some sort of application process? There will be an application. Um, process put out, uh, it will be on the website and probably in the Cape Courier. And uh, presumably, we, hopefully we will attract a pool of candidates and uh, from that pool, the way it's been established is the uh, school board chairman and myself will select the five community members. And uh, then we'll give them their charge and, and they'll be off and running. Thank you. Other questions, comments, discussion? All in favor of the motion? Unanimous. Thank you. And lastly, um, item which has already been brought back off the table, item number 96-2009, street lighting policy. Sorry, can I just interject for one second? I think, aren't you supposed to appoint someone? I can do that tonight. Oh, sorry, I thought you were supposed um, to tonight. Or I can do it at my leisure. Okay. Would you like me to do it tonight? At your leisure. At your leisure. At your leisure. At your leisure. Thank leisure. You. I thought it was part of the motion. Okay. Um, I will do that within the next day. Uh, item 96, 2009, uh, street lighting policy. Uh, Mike, would you like to have a couple comments? Just on, on very briefly. We haven't updated this, this street lighting policy in 16 years. Uh, whenever you change the street lighting policy, it can be somewhat controversial. Uh, the good thing about changing the street lighting policy at this point is that you know there is some a lot more sense in 2009 than there, than there was in 1993 that we ought to be looking at more energy efficiency and that that we ought not to have wasteful lighting uh, this this particular policy narrows the areas uh, that will have lighting uh, and it's in keeping with a budget decision that was made on the 13th to reduce approximately 100 street lights uh, in town but this specifically uh, you know, one big change is that right now they're provided at dead end streets, and this specifically says that reflective signing is a viable alternative to street lighting in many areas and is the preferred alternative at dead ends. Uh, you know, the, the sense that in, in the long run that's much more uh, rec recognizing issues of carbon, carbon footprints, uh, and uh, you know, also for those that wish to see the stars, they'll be able to see the stars. Uh, this does give uh, quite a bit of discretion to the chief of police in the execution of the policy. Thank you, Mike. We have a motion. I'll move that we uh, update the street lighting policy with its first revision since 1993 as presented in our agenda. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion on the motion? Okay. I'm going to vote in favor of this, but is the street lighting policy written somewhere? And yeah, the current one is on the top of the sheet. I'm sorry. Yep. Okay. And then the new proposed one is down below. It's a, it's a total re rewrite of it. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor of the motion? Unanimous, thank you. Uh, before we adjourn to uh, a town council workshop, I would like to uh, enumerate the upcoming meetings that we have, public meetings. May 11th is our regular town council meeting, and at that meeting there will be a public hearing on the BA zoning, uh, proposed BA zoning uh, amendment issues. There will be a resolution of the town center intersection, which had been tabled from uh, last year until uh, May. On May 14th, uh, the council will have a workshop, uh, and we will 
uh, work on the Alternative Energy Committee's uh, report and the Energy Audit Report results. Also, the U.S. Mayor's Climate Protection Agreement resolution from Cool Cape will be, uh, will be there, and we can work with them on their uh, proposals. June 8, 2009, we have a regular uh, town council meeting. Uh, and on June 15, uh, 2009, we have a tentative workshop uh, scheduled at which we will discuss the Shore Road Pathway Committee report, the Goddard Mansion report, and the uh, Council Goal Status Report. So, uh, having said that, I would accept a motion to adjourn to our workshop. So, so moved. moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, all in favor? Stand adjourned at 8.50, please. <laughs>